Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. Today we have received a 65-year-old male to the ER with complaints of numbness and tingling sensation of the left lower limb, sir. Uh, so, uh, coming to the primary survey, patient uh, airway was the patent, breathing was saturation was 99% on room air and uh, as, uh, respiratory rate is 22 per minute. Okay. Coming to the BP, patient was having 140 by 80 mmHg and heart rate was 80 beats per minute. All peripheral pulses were palpable. Next, coming to disability, GCS was E4, V5, M6. Pupils were bilaterally reactive. Next, uh, exposure was temperature was febrile and GRBS was 200 range, sir. So, uh, coming to the uh, comorbidities, patient was a known case of hypertension, was on tab silicar 10 mg, sir. Apart from that, uh, patient Silindipin. was silindipin. silindipin, and even also uh, dyslipidemia, he was on aterostatin, sir. Right now, patient uh, coming to the events leading to this uh, episode, uh, when he had uh, woken up that day, he felt like uh, he is not able to walk properly and then he feels like tingling sensation and also numbness in the lower half of the left lower limb. Apart from that, while he was walking, he was having attacks, he is not able to walk in a straight line, he is falling towards the left side. So, in view of which he was taken to a local hospital, uh, around uh, he woke up at around 6 o'clock and at 10 o'clock like that he was taken to the local hospital. Uh, once they evaluated and they further referred to our hospital, sir. So, right now patient came by afternoon which was clearly out of the window period as of now. And uh, on arrival to… window period? Uh, window period usually 4.5 hours is considered as a window period. Which but conditions? as a patient, as soon as he woke up, he was complaining of such symptoms. We cannot ascertain the proper window period and we need to take it as wake up stroke. Okay, any other condition you don't consider window period and thrombolysis? Pulmonary embolism would be... No, no, here, stroke. In stroke, sir? 4.5 okay. hours after... If it is an uh, evolu uh, like evolving, evolving stroke... If the still progression is there, then he can thrombolyze. Yes, so, as in this case, uh, coming to the emergency management, as we have assessed the airway, breathing and circulation, then we need to establish the IV axis and uh, check for hypoxia initially to remove the stroke mimics. Uh, every stroke patient is not necessary to get oxygen, but if it, we, our target is to maintain saturation about 94%. Apart from that, uh, bedside glucose uh, uh, test is the only lab test which is required before imaging. Everything can else wait for the imaging, but a glucose test would be required. In this patient, it was around 212, okay. not a known case of diabetes. Sir. Okay. Next, coming to other uh, investigation beds, uh, like adjuvants, it would be required to connect to the cardiac monitor as in the C part to see if there is any arrhythmia, such kind of things would have given us an idea whether the reason of the stroke. Otherwise, 12 lead ECG would be helpful. Other than that, uh, CBC and coagulation studies, like suppose if there is a polycythemia, thrombocytosis or thrombocytopenia would give an idea of it. And uh, coagulation studies, if there is a baseline coagulation defect can give us an idea whether it is an hemorrhagic stroke or whatever regarding this. Next, other important uh, uh, relation as, for the, as per the presentation, if patient has altered mental status, then we need to consider about meningitis, like an LP would be helpful. If a patient comes with complaint of fever, seizure, then we need to consider about the other uh, differential diagnosis. Otherwise, uh, cardiac biomarkers also will be helpful. Uh, in a study done, we can see that anti-proBNP raise within 48 hours of onset of stroke would ascertain it to be a cardio, cardiac related uh, okay. etiology can be ascertained. Uh, in our neurogenic pulmonary edema? <coughs> neurogenic pulmonary edema is the condition in which because of any trauma or any sudden burst of uh, sympathetic system. Yes, sympathetic burst by neurological. It is not only a trauma, it can be, a, yes, it sir. can happen any condition where raised ICP occurs. Yes, what is that? Burst of hemorrhagic or dry, then yes. what will happen? That causes uh, palpitations and uh, heart Tachy failure, basically. Tachycardia and heart failure. failure. And these patients may develop pulmonary edema. Mm -hmm. So that also can happen, that can also raise your problem. So, as per in our patient, uh, uh, the MRI was done, which was showing, uh, like, uh, depending upon the localization, patient has ataxia with the sensory deficit. Uh, in the deficit brain, of it's a sensory deficit of left lower limb. Only lower limb. Yes, sir. Only Not lower limb. limb. Not there, sir. 
it uh, was turned out to be lacunar in fact in thalamus okay. and uh, depending upon the thalamus structure and function thalamus is the only place where a sensory it is uh, you are telling it is a partial thalamic strobe yes sir what do you, what do you mean by complete thalamic strobe complete thalamic strobe the whole thalamus is uh, so what will happen in that case all the sensory inputs all the motor inputs which is relaying through the thalamus would be affected even the auditory and the ophthalmic medial geniculate lateral geniculate body everything will be involved Okay. So whole body sensory whole body face face also will be involved face, face and is, same side same side face is supplied by which cranium trigeminal sensory trigeminal will that also go to thalamus it will be relayed through thalamus everything okay. is related everything to all sensation including the fifth cranium only olfaction is not related okay. to thalamus arrest so, all sensation special th- sensation thalamic stroke full one side is Uh, like same side same side uh, it will completely from face to upper limb lower limb Proprio but like you told some patients can have partial involvement of some fibers yes. okay so that is also possible so coming to regarding thalamus like uh, we divide thalamus into nuclei we divide into dorsal nuclei anterior nucleus and ventral nuclei uh, lots of nuclei but uh, function wise if we talk uh, the ventral nuclei there are sensory relay pathway it is basically and ventro posterior ventro lateral is the motor pathway so uh, from the cortex to the muscles it is goes through ventro lateral and ventro posterior medial and ventro posterior lateral these two are the nuclei for all the sensations from the body towards the sensory cortex so in our patient we as depending upon the localization we are expecting to be involved in ventral nuclei okay. so it can explain both ataxia and the sensory loss okay. and uh, thalamus is basically supplied by the posterior the reason for ataxia in a sensory stroke ataxia is due to what two reason one the efferent which is giving the proper the suction there it can be default dorsal column pathway dorsal column is involvement mm-hmm. in what in, in, dorsal columns involvement can explain the attacks attacks yeah. Uh, so regarding like uh, in, the, in the thalamus complete thalamus uh, is supplied by the basilar communicating artery posterior communicating artery and the posterior pca posterior cerebral uh, cerebral artery branches of it it's a supply of posterior cerebral artery so basically posterior circulation stroke posterior is a part cerebral. of a posterior circulation stroke and uh, the patient who is uh, suffering initially numbness and tingling sensation after some effort, what, is, what are the differential diagnosis for uh, thalamic syndrome thalamic stroke locked in syndrome we can no, thalamic stroke is like what you told the sensation loss or mm-hmm. hypersensitivity on the whole side yes sir where else you get like that hmm eh? lateral medullary syndrome is a different syndrome there are lot of other features are there lateral medulla is what you can get one side weakness one side numbness so sensory or or motor level sensory sensory thalamic stroke is a sensory, sensory primarily sensory. sensory loss with irritation throughout that sensory area yes, where else you get same finding that is called as sens- uh, uh, sensory seizures okay so same thalamic there is an irritating lesion that can sometimes so seizure and patient has similar finding in mm-hmm. a burning sensation all over one side of the body yes. okay so that also you should keep in mind suppose you are not getting any lesion in the CT or MRI. Here we are getting a lesion, so it is straight away. It is a sensory stroke, sensory seizure, sensory stroke. Both will have almost similar finding because there is no weakness. Yes. Sir. So in this patient, regarding the further workup, patient uh, uh, when we had checked for the HbA1c levels, it was 7.5. So it's a newly diagnosed diabetes mellitus with a known case of hypertension and dyslipidemia. who presented with stroke mm-hmm. uh, apart from that uh, the cardiac rhythm was normal there were no any valvular replacements or no any uh, how do you manage of, this sugar in this patient uh, in this patient uh, as per the studies as per the aha guidelines uh, the acute management of sugar with the help of insulin will reduce microvascular complications not the macrovascular microvascular like retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy these all can be reduced better but macrovascular complications like a stroke mi these have no uh, as per the uh, studies but in such patient newly diagnosed with stroke it acutely requires a Do you proper think it's a lacunar stroke or a macrovascular stroke stroke is macrovascular stroke itself there are Yes, two sir. types of macrovascular stroke if major arteries are involved something called as lacunar infarct lacunar infarct is 2 to 3 mm. 2 to 3 mm 
So that is also possible because Thalamus is a very small area. This is a lacunar area. Uh, lacunar, in fact, is possible. So uh, ma- macrovascular disease, you have to treat with aspirin, clopidogrel, all these things. But if you are thinking it is a microvascular disease, then you have to start insulin. Okay. So for this patient, we had started insulin because of the involvement of the new onset stroke, sir. Apart from that, uh, uh, there are... Uh, so the patient's sugars may be well controlled with your OHS. So that is a different issue. But mac- microvascular diseases cannot be prevented by OHS. OHS. Their insulin is required. Even if the sugars are well controlled, it is better to start on a small dose of insulin for this patient. Just uh, the patient actually came with complaints of numbness and tingling, but uh, throughout the hospital staff, after a few days, he complained of pain. So there is a syndrome, digerin rousey syndrome, which is the pain syndrome in infarcted area in the thalamus. After the uh, few days, it will develop into chronic pain. Wherever the numbness is there, that pain, the involvement can be there. It's because of the involvement of the hyperesthesia. Involvement of the thalamogenic gland branch that uh, blood supply will be stopped and the area will become uh, necrosed and the thalamus will be perceiving it will block it will not block the sensory pathways of pain so it we perceive as pain from that region for which we can use a neuropathic uh, pain medication like pregabalin and gabapentin, gabapentin so for this patient we started pregabalin as the first line of neuropathic pain management so for the patient uh, we added a new insulin medication and we even loaded the patient as it's a stroke but nih score comes below 5 so we don't need to uh, Thrombolize, thrombolize the patient, but uh, we had to start on the profile, uh, like a uh, management of antiplatelets. So start aspirin. But okay. as it's a thalamic stroke, higher chance of bleed will be there. So we did not do a dual antiplatelet, okay. single antiplatelet only was so given. Aspirin 150 milligram with the statin. Statin. He was already on statin, which uh, was a proper cholesterol level for ethylene range, so we did not change that. Okay. Apart from that, we had started pregabalin so that the sensation... So what is the role of anti-cholesterol drugs in stroke? Is it going to cholesterol, reduce the cholesterol and... Fix the problem or something the else? The fibroma, the atherosclerosis, which is forming, that it will inhibit the prolongation of it because of which stroke complications will reduce. But so it is called as plague stabilization. Plague so you have a plague, but it will prevent the rupturing of the plague. That mm-hmm. is the one advantage of statins. Other advantage, like you told, it can reduce the cholesterol. So many things that uh, if cholesterol is normal, why to start statin? That is for plague stabilization. Plague stabilization. Yes. Okay. Uh, just, uh, the patient was uh, well, uh, he was able to move. Uh, ataxia has uh, been, uh, we advised to do a PMR that is a physiotherapy for the ataxia and muscle movement, mm. sir. Management regarding that is. Aspirin? Uh, Aspirin with uh, statin with uh, insulin. insulin was yeah, the management which we And his own hypertensive medication which he was on. Okay. What else you want to tell about? Sir, just like stroke classification. Brainstem syndromes. Sir? Brainstem syndromes. A lot of brain stem, brain stem syndrome. Anterior spinal cord post. Brain stem syndrome. Okay. Oh, sorry, okay. But it is not, nowadays we are not focusing on that because we have MRI. MRI yes. Previously we used to focus on that because we want to localize, uh, localize where is lesion, whether it is in red nucleus, whether it is in uh, other, other areas. So depending on the clinical finding, cl- cranial nerve involvement, each stroke has got a name. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nowadays we don't, we don't mm-hmm. learn that, but we should know which artery is involved. Posterior circulation strokes are dangerous or not dangerous? They are dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Hmm? All are dangerous, but this is more dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Bleeding chances, they say. Bleeding chances, mm-hmm. both it is there. Why it is dangerous? We don't admit any posterior circulation stroke in an ordinary ward. We try to keep in HD or ICU. Herniation chances. Post what is that? In fact, herniation. Brain that tentorial. is a small packed area, highly no. packed area. Posterior circulation area is a highly packed small area. Even if small enlargement because of the brain edema or bleed, it can herniate or it can destroy the full structure there. So we want to make sure that patient is not deteriorating. So you need com- continuous monitoring. Other strokes, if it is a small lacunar infect, you can directly shift the patient to ward or even you can discharge the patient if there is no other symptom. Yeah, sure. Posterior circulation strokes are not like that. You have to always keep the patient under observation. Yeah. That you should keep in mind. Yes. Otherwise, it's a normal case. Okay? Yes.